Our first presenter today is Emmanuel Eiter. Did I say that correct? You had a moment of hesitation. <laughs> I had to think about the last name just, just a teeny bit smidgen. And uh, he can introduce himself and have at it and have fun. You know, my then, nickname used to be E.T., so I think I fit perfectly here. Because Emmanuel E.T., so everybody was like, eh, eh. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay. You found me. I take surrender. It, take it away. <laughs> All right, hello, everybody. You had a good lunch? You ready for some fun? Yeah. Cool. Let's get going. So as you said, my name is Emmanuel Littier. I'm French. Yes, with an accent like this, it's hard to hide it. Uh, I live in the US for the last 30 years. And uh, how did that happen that I do these films? Ta-da! Uh, well, I was 15. I was sitting in a theater like this, looking at a math professor, and uh, I couldn't understand a word of what he was saying. He was doing some weird formulas, and in my crazy brain, I'm French again, that explain, um, I, I heard a poem. So here I am writing a poem in a math class. Who am I? You know, it was kind of a, I was 15, kind of an existentialist, borderline suicidal, probably cry for help type of poem. But anyway, uh, I go home, I sleep, and I see the poem as a movie, as a short. So I'm like, whoa, what's going on? You know, my mom is a teacher, my dad is a doctor, some very sane, down on earth people. And here I am having visions of some sort, you know. Uh, but I'm not Joan of Arc, I'm Emmanuel Itier. Uh, and so, anyway, to make it short, I went ahead and uh, put together a movie of my vision. And that's how I started my career. I never been to school, I never studied film. Um, I'm just somebody that really, think, therefore is, therefore do. And, and it's really where I want to lead us today into our doing, because I think, you know, we've been doing a lot of thinking, talking, and all of that, but we need to act at one point. And that, that's how your life gets transformed, when you really stand up and do the work and not only the talk. Um, so in doing so, uh, for me, it's about movies. And I wanted to do a different type of movies, you know, movies that are transformative, because I think it's all about transformation, like Einstein said and other people, nothing is created, nothing is destroyed, everything is transformed, which will be the topic of our friend Irving Laszlo tonight, uh, who is in one of my movies. Um, so I'm super happy that he's here. Hello, Irving. Oh, shoot, he's still eating lunch, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, our movies are about transformation. You know, I, I think we are all brilliant geniuses. All of us are brilliant geniuses, and it's really important to, to have that inside of us. You know, that's the basic faith. And by the way, faith is not a religious term. Faith is a pagan verb uh, that comes from the old Roman times, and, uh, which is fidere, and it means to trust. And that's what has disappeared in the world, and we're going to try to understand why. But the trust within ourselves and with each other, uh, that has been removed, you know, and that has been transform into really this sensation of uh, separation, of hatred, uh, and turning into then racism and terrorism and, and the mess and the chaos we are in right now. So our movies are about that, about trying to bring back the trust within yourself and therefore the trust with each other. Because when, when you're strong within yourself, you're fearless, you know, you're not afraid of anything. So even if you don't know somebody or, or even if they look threatening, you're gonna go and engage and say, hey, what's your problem? Really, you want to kill me? Why? Why? Let's talk about it before you shoot me, you know? And it does usually work. I mean, you have to talk fast and act fast, <laughs> <laughs> especially if they have a gun. Yeah. Anyway, don't always follow my advices, by the way. You know. <laughs> But anyway, so we created, and when I say we, it's really uh, my wife, who is really the better half, but she couldn't be here, so you end up with a poor, silly French guy, uh, myself. And then we have a, a partner named Sharon Stone, the actress. Um, and uh, for the last 10 years, we've been doing quite amazing work uh, around the world. And they can be that movie, Femme, and we're gonna watch a trailer, which is really uh, women healing the world and 
we went around the world and tried to understand really what's wrong about our planet. Um, and for me, really, it's a realization that we have failed because we have really totally disassociated, uh, castrated the feminine from the masculine. And it's not only between couples, but it's in, within ourselves. Because as you know, in the belly of our mothers, we don't have a sex for more, uh, for three months, roughly. We, we have this creature with all this energy, feminine and masculine, yin and yang. And then there is a separation or not. Uh, but in any case, we embody the feminine and the masculine. What's sad is that by age four, five, you know, uh, the little boy, and I was one of them, is told, hey, you cannot cry. Why do you cry? Hey, you cannot fail. Hey, you're the, you're the Superman. You're the God. Oh, by the way, here's a gun toy and go play with. That's it. That's how you screw a planet, by raising kids, boys, who have this Superman complex and who are incapable of loving, who are just programmed to kill. That's it. You know, while you beautiful women on the other spectrum are just raised to protect, nurture, care, and love. But then you're dealing with idiots like us who don't know how to do that. So we have to really counter-program that and realize, and by the way, I'm doing that. I've got three boys, age 11, four, and two. I had to think about that because I'm terrible with numbers. Uh, but you know, when they cry, I don't say, hey, you sissy, you know, shut up, toughen up, you're a man. What does that mean? You know, you, you have a right to cry, you have a right to fail, uh, and you have a duty to love. And that's what I tell my boys. I say, it's fine, you can be whatever, but you just never raise an arm on anybody, and even yourself, because it starts with yourself, the self-abuse, as we see. So that's fun. Uh, and then we do all the type of movie. We film regular dramas around the world. Red Passage is a beautiful Chinese movie that I shot in Hong Kong with Chinese partner last year and then right now we're doing uh, among other things a movie called The Cure Healing the Mind Healing the Body and it's really a study of uh Again, what the shaman was saying about healing ourselves. How do we, how do we start? How do we engage? Uh, well, we come to conferences like this and we engage with each other. So that's, that's been my work for the, around the world for the last uh, 10 years, making peace one movie at a time, you know. And really around the world, like you see us right now shooting uh, invocation in Israel, in Jerusalem, and then on the right, you can see me with uh, Archbishop Nobel Peace Laureate Desmond Tutu uh, in South Africa. And then after seeing him, I went in South Africa filming some giraffe, trying to communicate with the other type of animal. That's me with Sean Stone uh, getting some awards because our movies have been released all over the world and gathering a lot of awards. So basically our movies are really an invitation to join forces. Because again, as I said, you are brilliant geniuses, you have skills and talent I don't have and I don't want them and you don't want my madness. Leave my madness to yourself, <laughs> to myself, keep yours. But how do we combine? How do we articulate and co-create like Scott was saying? Because we are all partners potentially and it's about trying to figure out what are you good with, what am I good with, and how does that work? You know, and I think with the internet, look at that, that's coming from the internet, we can at least start the conversation. And I really truly believe that when the seven billion geniuses that we are on this planet join forces, that's it, that's your fifth word. There is, there is no more even communication, it's one global mind, Acting, 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 and healing, healing. And there is no more disease, there is no more war, no more poverty, no more economical struggle. It's one, one happy uh, people and maybe one happy universe because maybe by that time we will have entered in communication with other forces. Yeah, and, and forces in the sense of building, not destroying, which again, the word forces was programmed in our head more as a destruction than a creation. Um, we do also commercial uh, from time to time, that's a shot from a commercial we just uh, did. And um, that's 
pretty much it in a nutshell right now. So why don't I, instead of talking and not having subtitle, so make it very hard for you to understand me, show you in images what we do. So the first movie that came from uh, that collaboration uh, was the invocation. And the invocation is a study of oneness uh, from the notion of energies to God and in between. Uh, we went all around the world, uh, met with brilliant mind, such as Irvin Laszlo, who's going to join us sooner than later. And um, here it is. Check out the trailer for the invocation. There is some web that ties all of life together. It's within us, and it's within every single person that we meet. And this agent is what we can call God. This thing that we're all connected is finally dawning on people in a very basic sense. We can manifest a world that works for the highest and best within all of us. When you start to deny people of an other cultural background the ability to receive the spirituality of God, that leads to war. If you can heal your own aggression, your own selfishness, violence, greed, you begin the process of helping the world. The greatest voices for peace through history have been very deeply spiritual and faithful people. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Our experience as humans would be improved if we regarded as our highest invocation the commonality of our species. To have a living experience of uniqueness. And if God is not difficult to fight, God is impossible to avoid. What is going to happen is an awakening on the part of people. There's a revolution of spiritual seekers and warriors coming out. Look at all of these people marching for peace together at the exact same time. It's humanity. It's remarkable. It's magic. The journey into self-realization and discovery begins with a desire for connection. And it's already here, it's uh, all over the internet. That's how we do our distribution, by the way, because when you do this film, the second tough part is uh, to bring them to life, to bring them to you. Uh, but today, again, with the internet, the good news is that you can do that. You can put it on iTunes. Hi. Um, we're really proud of our movie. Ah, and we're it. really excited to be here, and thank you for being here with us. Actually, that's funny. That's, uh, we received a, an award in uh, Beverly Hills, and Sean Stone showed up. Our so we were getting the award. Okay. Our film <laughs> is a beautiful film, and I believe our film has a great statement to make. We had so many beautiful people come and talk in our movie from The Puppet to Oliver Stone to Deepak Chopra. So many people participated in the making of this beautiful film because so many people shared the belief that spirituality, your faith, your God, your belief in the planet is bigger than your fear, your anger, or your temporary lapses in courage. And my belief is that God, however you see God, I see God as love, is that God was smart enough to be able to speak all of the languages of religion, all of the languages of love, all of the languages of the way we express ourselves in faith. And therefore, all of those religions and spirituality and faith that God or any sort of gods may have invented are here to align us together and not to tear us apart. And so, we have to believe that whatever thing is greater than we are, if we can put our egos aside and imagine there is something greater than us, is meant for us to align and love one another, is meant for us to be embracive of one another, and is meant for us to be peaceful with one another. And if we can imagine just for a second that our 
myself is just simply the possibility that exists in us. We, as a self, is just a possibility. That this moment is just a possibility of what we can be. It isn't even what we are. That just now is just the living, breathing possibility of ourselves. That our in-breath is just the possibility of what we can breathe out. That we can be so much more, so much greater if we just breathe in the possibility of exhaling a greater self. That even in this moment, all of us collectively can become a greater oneness. We can come into this room tonight as a, the possibility of one thing and we can leave with a greater self. You can turn to the person next to you and just accept them. You can turn to you and go, you know what, I think I'll like you. Instead of, I, th I think maybe, maybe no, maybe I don't like the dress, maybe I like the dress, maybe I'm going to say, oh, I wouldn't dress like that, or maybe I wouldn't, but I'm going to like this person anyway. You know? And stop the judgment, stop the pettiness, stop the smallness and say, I'm going to accept you, I'm going to embrace you, I'm going to say it's okay, and stop the bullshit. And say, peace, I'm going to be okay with you. What, what happens? What happens if this room tonight is the last room you got to be in? What happens if this was it? Wouldn't it just be so great if this was the place you found love? This was the place you found friendship. This was the place you found dignity and decency and possibility. What if this was it? You know, I, I, I had to face that possibility. I, I've been in that place in my life where I was right up against the end. And I can tell you for sure, it would have been great to be standing there in love. So I can ask you, take a look around the room and say, if you were the only chance I had, I sure could love you. Because you can. So turn around to the person next to you and go ahead and love them. So that's, that's what is fantastic. When you push a button, things come to life. You know, for example, I didn't, I didn't program that video and it came to the computer, truly. Truly amazing how, again, you know, once you have a thought and you put it in action, wonderful, come, wonderful things come beyond your imagination, beyond your thinking. And, and that's why I always dare people to act and not just there and keep doing their thinking, their meditating, their praying. That's great, but that's not enough. That's not how you change the world. You change the world by standing up, by starting to walk. Um, thank you, Irvin Laszlo, for joining us. We just showed them the, the trailer of the invocation. Irvin is in it. And uh, I learned a lot from this gentleman over there. So after doing the invocation, Sharon Stone and I had a little bit of a brainstorm session. And she said, well, that, that movie was great. Uh, what do you want to do next, Emmanuel? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm a man. I don't know anything about women. Why don't I do a feminist movie? You know, a movie just with women. And mainly maybe for women only at first. Uh, uh, and she said, but you're crazy. You're, you're going to fail. You're a guy. You don't know anything about us. I'm like, no, on the contrary. I, I want to learn. I want to seek. I want to wander around the world with all of you ladies and, and like me, teach me, t show me what's wrong with us and what's wrong with the world. So here it is, Femme, Women Healing the World. There's never been a better time to be a woman. It's a new birth, and in this birth, women take the lead. Women are becoming the primal power person. La próxima revolución probablemente venga de las mujeres de la pasión por vivir. Any woman who knows how to run a household knows how to run a world. Men cannot heal the patriarchy, but women and men together could. What a real man does, he 
stokes the flame of the feminine. He stokes the radiance of the feminine. He lets her be everything she can be, and she is the power source of the universe. We have to give new tools, a new vocabulary, uh, allowing space for emotions and communication, and also supporting young women in finding their voice and speaking their truth. If men raise children as much as women do, that awakens in men the nurturing that is in all human beings, and it allows boys and girls to see that men can be as loving and nurturing. It's been so imbalanced in the role of leadership that the masculines all the way up here, even with a lot of women politicians, suddenly the feminine is beginning to rise. What leadership is calling for now is a whole integrated individual that comes from the heart and the soul and knows that it is better for our society than what we've been doing so far. We want to help transform the world because otherwise the children won't survive. Otherwise our biosphere will collapse. People are fascinated by the archetype of the Titanic because we're on it. We are headed to the iceberg. So what we have to do is turn around the Titanic in time. We have to turn around and we have to turn around now. We have to take back our power and say no to no one. It's all about remembering peace and love. Women are the growing edge of our species right now. They are going to fix the world. Not anymore. So this is what we do in a nutshell, you know, we are trying to truly make peace uh, one movie at a time. Um, how much time do we have left? Do you want to see maybe 15 minutes of invocation of them? We've got um, 23.6 uh, minutes left. Yeah, maybe we watch 10-15 minutes. Which one do you want to see, the invocation of them? Fem, of course! The lady talk. When a lady talk, you listen and you follow. <laughs> so, okay, let's watch 15 minutes of that, and then we can have a little bit of a conversation where you can ask me whatever question you have. Uh, let's see, here it is. There's never been a better time to be a woman. <laughs> it's a new birth, and in this birth, women take the lead. Don't touch me, I'm not your. That's my parents. The divine feminine does. La próxima revolución probablemente venga de las mujeres de la pasión por vivir. Women are becoming the primal power person. are the growing edge of our species right now. They are going to fix the world. Not anymore.
tell you, you can look at, back at some of these ancient artifacts, like for instance, the Venus of Willendorf's. They're like 30 or 40,000 years old. And many scholars today will tell you that they believe that those artifacts point to a time when goddess was revered. Women were also more uplifted in society. They were the life givers. This was looked upon as something very magical, very powerful. In the Chinese mythology, there is a goddess. Her name is Wa. Uh, she was the one who created this world from the earliest Homo sapiens sapiens to at least 4000 BCE. The indigenous people were goddess worshiping and were equalitarian. There is very little evidence of, um, of warfare. I looked, for example, at the Minoan civilization that flourished on the island of Crete in the Mediterranean for thousands of peaceful years. There were different city-states, but they were not at war with each other. And as far as gender relations go, these cultures had a much more equal partnership. Il va en être de même au temps de la civilisation celte où la femme était à la fois déesse, mère, grand-mère, chef de clan, voire reine. Women were the gravitational force, holding things together, producing the food, doing the adjudication and the education. That was a balanced relationship in early cultures of human beings. All of life was really informed by a veneration of the goddess nature. This veneration of the goddess nature led to a love of peace, a horror of tyranny, and a respect for the law. But then, you know, patriarchy starts to enter the equation. We go from a society that thinks about the we to a society that thinks about the I, more into a culture that doesn't include the values of nurturing, and, you know, we get into more of a society that's more about the individual. And then when the horse-riding Indo-Europeans with their sky god came down into the Europe, the goddess-worshipping people were a pushover because they were not geared to war. À partir du 5e siècle avant Jésus-Christ, les envahisseurs marquèrent de leur saut un monde nouveau, créant les rivalités, le commerce, les convoitises et beaucoup de soucis pour les femmes. The rise of the big man, you know, as the leader, was really a reaction to these incursions by nomadic herders. So the fact is that not everywhere was it at the same time, the shift, not everywhere was it perhaps for the same reasons, but it happened. I think if we can start to perhaps identify the coming forward of the masculine, when we sort of settled down, as it were, and began to sort of come together and to the population began to grow, somehow we, we changed our view of ourselves and the earth, and therefore ourselves and the, the deeper perspectives of the divine and feminine balance, and we start to separate ourselves. All of us, every man and woman, comes into the world with elements that are what we call traditionally masculine or feminine. One part of us is feeling vulnerable, connected, playful. And the other part can focus, go for a goal, enter a competitive world, and get better and better at whatever it is that we do until power enters and conquering other people or dominating other people's goals. I think it's in the nature of culture itself. When you have cultures that were settled by pioneers and where muscle strength was so important, then of course what you have is an emphasis on that muscle strength and on the masculine having the priority. There is a primal aspect of that because men are hunters and gatherers. And we have to be grateful for that as women because for much of our existence we've needed men to hunt and gather for us. And it has been a big part of our ability to exist and to procreate. Women wanted men and needed men to protect themselves, to be the providers. And the men had a great burden with that. It's a super 
underground complex and it was in order to protect and to prevail and to win. And certainly the women and the children were part of that. And then it became totally abusive in the patriarchy. When patriarchy supplanted, you know, the matriarchal societies, basically it was this fear of women and of their power. And so there was this desire to control them and put them down and, and not give them a voice. It is part of the patriarchy to want to control. It is part of a hierarchical structure to want to control. If you have no control, then who's in authority? If we're all in authority, which is what the feminine teaches us, then there is nobody in control. And that is very threatening to the patriarchy. Patriarchal is, is father rule. And indeed, in the patriarchal cultures, the male always ruled. The pater familias, the father of the family, had complete right over life and death over his whole family, which included his wife, his children, and any servants who worked for him. A group of women who were frustrated with the way things were started to march and they started to talk about equal pay and they started to talk about equal rights and a group of us who weren't in the lead began to follow them and in my case I began to know that I could have options. I began to dream. stop here <laughs> it's a tease but I've got the movie for sale here for 10 euros so <laughs> you can get it um, so that's what we do um, you know right now we are pursuing the work of uh, making peace one movie at a time we are working on uh, a movie I just mentioned called the cure healing the mind healing the body and actually I'm going to conduct a, an interview with Mr. Laszlo because I was so impressed by his participation in the first movie um, we are doing another movie um, about politics and economics because uh, I think we all have been deceived by what we call politicians and economicians and uh, we have to first trying to understand what these words means because I think we have forgotten the, the notion of uh, true economics and politics uh, and I'm doing also a movie on shamanism um, so I just interviewed uh, the shaman that was here um, but please if you have any question uh, about anything um, ask me and I shall respond don't be shy Well, it's, it's called the Oneness Collection, and really um, it started with the invocation. And, and the way the invocation came is that uh, I was driving, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker also of traditional movies, like I saw you, I showed you, I, I just produced a Chinese movie. But I really wanted to do documentaries, and I had no idea how to start and even what to pick as a first topic and subject. So as I was driving down to LA one day, I really, I just was boiling within and, and I just swore to the universe, really, you know, putain! And I got my response. He said, well, you're going to do a movie about that, you know, about existence, about God, you know. So I was one of these crazy guys that for his first subject took a large subject matter as God. And by the way, the movie is called The Invocation because when I started to study and meet eminent people like Irvin, who I met in Mexico at a spiritual conference, um, I didn't want to 
call the movie and, and use the word God because I think that word has been, you know, prostituted and, and abused so many times, so many ways, and is still. Um, so I, I look into the, the world itself, and I go online, and I'm looking for the etymology, the origin of the word. And I found out that actually the word God comes from a pan germano indo european verb, which means to invoke. So the invocation is really the notion of reaching out and communicating and linking. And that's what is God, you know, you don't need to believe it's a dude in the clouds who controls you. That's a little bit naive anyway, but if it's your faith, one shall respect it. But at least we can all agree that, that we are part of a grand ensemble where everything is collected on a molecular level. And so you can speculate that there is a universal global mind from all these molecules thinking sometimes consciously when we think we're trying to be in control just what i'm trying to say right now or when we just shut our eyes and close our mind and and there is that invisible mass that maybe is active and and what is the relationship with that so that that's how it started you know by uh, doing the invocation and then at the end of the invocation fam was not only the curiosity of the pervert Frenchman that I am for women, but <laughs> just teasing, but really also realizing that from doing invocation, because I had talked to so many women, that, that really the root of evil was that imbalance between the masculine and the feminine, how the, the, the masculine has castrated really the feminine uh, for the last 3,000 years, and by doing so, removed the feminine within itself, especially us men. Um, and so after doing these two movies, we decided to keep going, and that's why now we are working on three movies actively and we've got another four or five we're on the side burner yes michelle actually it's funny you mentioned that because on my way here, I just got hired to do that movie on shamans, and I didn't even know there was a shaman, so look at the serendipity. But on top of that, the woman who hired me, a woman, thanks to you, lady, again, <laughs> you save my ass every day. <laughs> she said, by the way, when we're done with that movie in September, um, I want you to work on a movie with, uh, with water. And I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, because somebody approached us, and there, there is a little bit of funding, and they want to, to understand the intelligence of water. So my answer, we're already on it, and please. Raining. Join forces. And it's raining. Thank you. <laughs> Any other question, please? Or remark or anything? Come on, ladies. <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, I think all these movies show that there is a shift, you know. And, and again, we are, we are trying to definitely not preach with these movies. We're not showing you the way, because I don't think there is the way. You know, if anything, Gandhi said, you know, uh, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. So uh, maybe the only way is peace, you know. Uh, but we are definitely doing that with our movie. We are showing that no matter what, you cannot stop what is in March, which is really a re-evolution of our species, um, of our humanity, of our universe. Um, nobody can truly know where it's going, but it's going toward a good solution, I think. Why not? Why not? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that never say no. I always say, you know, yes, but let's talk about it. And because, again, I don't want to be put in a box. I don't want to take side. I'm somebody who has no religion, no party. Well, I, I'm a guy, so I've got a sex, but <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know? <laughs> that's the only box. I'm kind of a guy, you know, with a lot of feminine energy in it. 
so yeah, why not? Let's make sure, you know, because I just participated to a movie like this and it was so sided that I had to say to the filmmaker, look, you're trying to preach that, uh, you know, we all have to believe in UFOs and ETs and it's great, but you cannot do that. It's not effective, it doesn't work. You can invite people to question and, and, and open the discussion, but you cannot force them to believe something that is too much out there. Yet, yeah, maybe. But so the answer is yes, but yeah. I'm a lover of movies. I must say that if you can continue your work in this way, you will be one of the saviors of this planet. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's about that. It's really passing on, you know, what you learn and you understand to the young generation. Because I think today, it's, more than ever, it's really tough to be young and alive. You know, they have so much manipulation imposed onto them, so much distraction. I see it with my kids, 11, 4, and 2. And the poor little creature, they are, they are, they are brainwashed every which way. They go to school and they are Jesus Christ there. And, and we should all have guns, especially with Trump. You know, I live in America. So it's, it's insane, the brainwashing and, and the mental rape that's done on children today. So we have to be very vigilant. We have to educate, again, not preach, uh, but educate and, and stimulate and open the mind. Because again, we want these geniuses to blossom and come up with the solution that we couldn't come up with. And uh, most of us. Absolutely, you know, and that's what we have, like when Sean Son was saying, I dare you to look at each other and say, I love you. That's three words that create everything. You know, I, you destroy everything. I love you, create a whole universe. So we have to constantly say it. We have to constantly do it. You know, and, and again, any little act of caring and nurturing and protecting you can do with each other, that's it. That's how you, you make life be. Yes. You, you thought I was just a French punk. <laughs> and you're right about that, except it's the holy French punk. <laughs> Well, we have another 24 hours. Yeah. You're welcome. I love you. Yes, absolutely. Every man should watch it. Actually, it's interesting because when I finished the movie, I thought, I, well, you know, I did it to thank you ladies for giving me life and still providing life for me, <laughs> mental and physically. But, you know, I thought, ah, damn it, you know, how are men going to react to it? And it was interesting because, you know, we've been to at least 40, 50 film festival and events around the world. And so many men come and hug me and with tears and like, oh my God, uh, you know, now I understand what's wrong with me or what's wrong with our planet. And, uh, and, and I always tell them, well, you're, you're welcome, you know, and, and you know, my, my biggest revelation was to discover that as a man, I don't have to be a killer. I don't have to be an asshole. And that's important because we are not trained to do that, especially in the corporate world. You're trained to kill the other bastard. Because you're told they are, that's it, take over, dismantle them, take all their resources. You know, and you see it still happening with the Hopi people of this morning or the shaman. It's, it's, it's incredible. And we can reverse that. You know? It took us 3,000 years to get into that mess, but everything is exponential today. So you know, a conference like this has an incredible impact. You know, we are recording, we are on the internet, everybody's listening, it's spreading already. So I really think we can change our planet very effectively and very quickly if we all get to work. The problem is to spank our own butt and each other butt to, to get to work. Because so many people wait to be saved. And no, you are a savior. 
you know, it's a messiah area. You cannot wait for one dude or woman to save your, from your mess. You, 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 you have the power within, so use it, you know. Just find what you're good with and just act, act with and on it. Yes. I'm interested in your view as the cure. Uh, when it's going to be so called ready, and is it there the content uh, alternative energy treatment or medicine and the problems that nearly 300,000 people are dying because of side effects of the medicine? Yeah, it's really, again, all my movies, as you can see, are, are global and film around the world. So with the cure, healing the mind, healing the body, I'm really trying to attack, to understand, to study the concept of healing uh, medicine-wise, old ancient tradition like shaman to new tradition like uh, chemotherapy, uh, um, spiritually different type of approach, understanding more consciousness. I think it's all link, you know, it's linked also with our environment. Uh, so it's, it's really quite a, a daunting task. Uh, we are almost done with the filming part, you know, because basically I go all around the world, I meet people and I collect as many information I can get. And when I feel we have enough, then we start the process of editing. And, and it's a nightmare because we end up with 300 to 500 hours of film and we need to structure it into something that's accessible, comprehensive, structured. So it takes usually an easy six months. Yes, my time is up, I know. <laughs> Go home, E.T. <laughs> anyway. So we, to answer your question, we should be done hopefully by the end of the year, and I hope that film will start touring in film festival next year, you know. So, I mean, thanks to the first two movies, we have now really, stretch out and build a quite an extensive network for distribution and film festival events. So I'm very confident that uh, this one's going to be even exposed more than the two previous ones. So. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Peace to you. Get to work. And uh, if you want the movies, $10 each, two for 15. Uh, 10 euros, 10 euros. <laughs> uh,